Because you know I wouldn't have come. <laughs> well, what do you all want to know? How do you get together? How do you make a movie? What was it like growing up in Montezuma? What was it like growing up in Montezuma in the 1920s? Let's start there. I wasn't dead. <laughs> Were you born? Let's see. Yeah, I was born there. In 19... Well, because I was born there, it doesn't mean I got to stay there the rest of my life. <laughs> You're born in 1919. I think so. Well, how would I know why? <laughs> <laughs> well, making a, making a film is like being an artist. You've got a blank canvas, and you've got a, a pile of colors, and instead of a splotch of red or a splotch of blue or a splotch of green, I've got uh, an old radio tape and an old still photo of downtown and a picture of Hosea and some wonderful people who volunteered to talk, like H. Johnson, who's here tonight, bless him for talking, and, and they got Andy Young to come out and talk. And, and you just start with this blank canvas and you work a long time. I worked a lot of weekends. At a, I had work at an edit facility, and this is truly a movie that cost zero dollars to make other, other than my that time isn't necessarily true. <laughs> now that means it was so pleasurable to work on I could sit in the edit suite and laugh and laugh and one of the great pleasures is that I never called a lawyer and so because of that I can't sell it or air it just yet so if anyone here has 75 grand a hundred grand well that's right he wants 25 grand so. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get all that great music from? Was that from the, you had the actual recordings from his show? With few exceptions, everything in that movie he played on the air. So let's give Pat a hand for his fabulous musical taste. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know if you're proud of this good sometimes. <laughs> and and, and, and they buy some commercials. <laughs> then maybe we could get the money to pay for their music. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, they got uh, music companies that you can't play the music unless you pay them. You all don't know that, but uh, that's the truth. All radio stations, when they play that music, uh, they have to pay for it, except uh, the... Except the... Uh, radio stations, like, you don't have to pay, and they, they don't pay any money, they're afraid. But other than that, I think we're dropping. I don't. Feel, I don't feel guilty about all this music because if Pat hadn't played Ray Charles in 1954, then that conglomerate wouldn't have that track to make all that money out of. Is right that why now. you can't release it because of that? That's right. I. I just. There's. There's 51 music cues in there, and um, and every time I show the film, it dissolves into some legal argument. I don't. I don't talk about it. It's just the way it is, and it, and I, I did it for free. And if anyone wants it. You can have it, you know. <laughs> no, don't, don't give your stuff. Don't give your stuff away now. It, it, it may not be worth nothing, but don't give it away. <laughs> yeah, where, where are all those shows kept and housed? How were you able to get all of those recordings of all those shows from Alley Pat? I've got a garage full of records, brother. He held on to his records, but he didn't hold on to any mo any posters, any memorabilia, any ephemera. Yeah, I really wasn't trying to make any money. Yeah. I was doing it for kicks. Really. So the so, tapes were air checks that you did? Those are air checks that I recorded when I came to town in 1983, and I fell in love with this show and the, and the great work that this man, I was a former disc jockey, and I just started recording these shows myself. I sit in traffic crying with laughter. You could really appreciate bad Atlanta traffic because it means you could spend more time with Pat. And I had no money. I would actually go down to Peaches and Turtles and cruise the 99 cent bargain bins to try and find cheap cassettes because a bad, you know, Best of the Carpenters double album <laughs> was cheaper than a blank. And that was one dollar instead of three. So I started taping all these shows and I put them in a shoe box for 25, 30 years. And then I thought, well, I'm an editor. There's a, maybe there's a movie here. And I started piecing the stuff together. And I suddenly realized why you don't see many documentaries about disc jockeys. You see a lot of NPR pieces, but as far as the documentary, every time he opens his damn mouth, I got to fill it with something, and so it was a struggle to get get the images filled up. But but I I promised the Auburn Avenue Research Library that they'll get all of my air checks. And what we are trying to do is put out a spoken word CD on a label called Dust to Digital. This is Lance and April Ledbetter. They run a great uh, archival reissue label called Dust to Digital. You should all look it up. Amazing stuff. 
and if we can get Pat to sign on the line and give him some money, he'll be able to finally make a little money off of these air checks. What, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put on the commercials without any music. There ain't gonna be no money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so I made a bunch of tapes too. I used to tape the show a lot of afternoons. Well, good, good. Uh, we'll we'll take all you got. Well, since I I. I I looked and looked, and as far as I could tell, I was the only person taping them. But oh, now no. someone else has come forward, and another person has come forward. Cassettes. So that's fine. It's a, a, a cassette is a lot better than nothing. Pat, what so. about that record that you put out? The uh, mm -hmm. House River Band and mm -hmm. some kind of I, I still government. have a copy of it. But what, what about the making? Like, how did that record come about? I lost the original copy, and I couldn't get another one. So I got somebody to pick it up for me in Japan. <laughs> but how was it? Why did you Why did you record it originally? I thought maybe I could make some money out of it. You know, when you broke, you try anything once you try it. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, he has another one that I wasn't in it at all. I don't think it wasn't. I just remember you told me once that you've always had a job and you've always had a scam. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, this is the record on, uh, <laughs> on, on, on uh, New Orleans after the storm, and uh, we don't have any music on it, so we can give it away, but we ain't going to. <laughs> what would you like most about the film, and what's yeah. the highlight of your career? Uh, the film, so he says, I wasn't in on that. So if it's anything you don't like, see him. <laughs> it must be nice to see and hear Hosea's voice again because you were so you were so tight with Hosea. <laughs> but it's 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 a hell of a film, and it's the truth. But we didn't have to lie. Not that we don't sometimes, but. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think happened to radio? Radio? What do I think what has has happened to it? From when you was in radio to like radio today. Well, radio is not the same as it was. Nothing is the same as it was sometimes back. Remember when you would get five gals for a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> that was two cents higher. <laughs> 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 I still have it. Yeah. Well, if they didn't hear it, they wouldn't. <clears throat> you wouldn't get the humor in it unless you play it two or three times and find out exactly what's going on. I'm sure you like hearing those old tapes of Carrie, you and Carrie on the phone carrying on. Mm. Well, now, nah. Carrie. Carrie was the greatest woman I think I ever met. She was just funny. And she didn't try to be. She was just funny. I don't care how you look at it, she was hell of a moment. And uh, I don't know know any more about Carrie than I do this band said, and I sure don't like no damn men. <laughs> you know? But Carrie was just funny. And I she called, I talked to her a half hour. Yeah. Yep. Anything. Awesome. Talk about anything. She called me up and said, uh, uh, Pat, you gonna bring the baby some milk? <laughs> so what the hell baby you talking about? See, this is my month for boys, honey. <laughs> but she was just funny. And I wish she was still living. There were a whole lot of a lot of people I wish she was still living. I wish some some of them cats I'm glad they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, not like you say, nobody from WERD is left. Everybody died. That's where really you're not left. They, they were dying. Them Negroes were dying <laughs> right here. So let me bail out of here. <laughs> but, uh, and then you moved to, w, moved to WAOK. Yeah, and and then they started dying. <laughs> so I had to leave there. <laughs> and you got to MC that, uh, that great Ray Charles concert, which was his first live album. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you, uh, you knew Brother Ray, right? 
Did I know him? He was like my brother. I had to take care of him for about a month when he after he closed us up 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 there at uh, Point Santa. He came here. He was saying like Ray Charles. I mean like uh, Nat King Cole then. Baby, let me hold your hand. That was the first record he recorded, and we put QP and I completely out of business. And he he was trying to get back to Florida. And didn't no, wait, you, you mean like nobody showed up? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, nobody showed up. Well, I think we had, must have had ten folks the whole week, <laughs> and uh, somebody had to feed the man. So I fed him. I thought he was. My brother for a while then, and, and uh, well, you know, you win some, you lose some, and some are rained out. <laughs> <laughs> but you brought so many people to town because you had a promotion business on the side too. So you were in radio. You don't have to tell all my business. <laughs> <laughs> you're in radio, and you were bell bondsman, and you're you bringing know, people to town. Boys sit around here, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? Behind color folk now. <laughs> so you're going to have to tell all about business. Uh, tell, tell them the story about Jimmy Reed and how you were a promoter and, a, and, and working at the jail at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> well, Jimmy Reed was a great drinker. <laughs> and that said it lightly. <laughs> and when Jimmy Reed would come to town, we must have had Jimmy Reed be in town tomorrow. And you meet him? I said, yeah, I'll be there. I go out to the airport and pick him up and I keep him with me. Until the show. At night, I'd take him down to the jail and get some of my friends down there and lock him up. <laughs> <laughs> so but that was just like throwing a, a rabbit in the briar patch. <laughs> he, he get drunk down there. Uh, get drunk in, in the jail. <laughs> get more drugs in jail than you can get on the street. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, since we are talking, I, I know you all don't want to come, and I don't blame you. I hate that I got to go, but I have to go down to uh, City Hall on Saturday. I'll be honored by... No, next Monday. Yeah, and, Monday. And the next Monday? Yeah. I'm glad I said that. Uh, I'll be honored by City Council. And I'm not going down there laughing at black folk and white folk. And they know they ain't doing a damn thing. They ain't <laughs> Whenever you see an organization, both, you know, both the organization are raised and they still in office, you know something's wrong. <laughs> really wrong. So I think my crowning statement would be either get up off your behind and Earn your salary or get the hell out. <laughs> Who's got another question? Yeah. So, yes, go ahead. What happened to Lucille and Tree? Tree who? Reese? You've had a guy named Tree, yeah? Yeah, Tree Reese. Yeah. Well, he died. Oh. Huh? Folk do die, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. Huh? That's what I've heard. Yeah, he died. And Lucille died. Oh. All of them dead but me. <laughs> well. Me and, and uh, what is that? You know. It looks like there's it's no end in sight for you. Death is inevitable. Uh -huh. But I have escaped so far. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you. What's been the highlight of your career? When you look back, what's been the, the top point for you? I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> My top problem when I get, when you and I sell that tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hey, why did you ever buy your own, start your own radio station? And that's more, there's more to that than just saying it. Because it isn't as hard as it used to be. It used to be a time when you couldn't buy, you couldn't give away a radio station unless you had a million dollars. But uh, it's come down now, and uh, AM is you can get you can pick up one of those for a few dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So just before I forget about it, when we when we get this Alley Pat spoken word CD together on Dust the Digital, the same social media stuff that we've connected you all with, that'll be on Facebook, 
There's a blog I keep called Alipat Archive. If you can just remember Alipat Archive. If you can remember Alipat Movie, that brings up. So for people you'd like to share this with, uh, you go to YouTube and search Alipat Movie, and I have about 20 minutes of the film up on YouTube, so you can send that around to people until they shut me down. You raised that question? Sir? Yeah, yeah. Ali, um, Mr. Pat. No. Jack Gibson. Yeah. Jack the Rapper. Jack the Jockey Jack. <laughs> he also worked at the same radio station, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he taught me. But no, I know. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He taught me. What did he teach you exactly? Uh, not to be afraid? Yeah, that's one of the things, not to be afraid. And uh, you know? you, we, we wasn't that unique to be on the radio. And it, and it certainly isn't now. I'm looking for another out of that now. If you happen to think of one that we can get up to get on. <laughs> uh, another one of my old favorite friends and I are uh, writing a book. Uh, I don't think, uh, are any of you looking at adventurous? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. 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 now. Now, we'll make a million dollars or two out of the title. We got, to, we got together on the title the other week. And the title of the book is uh, The Last of the Crackers. That would make a sell a billion copies. I don't know if I can take offense <laughs> without anybody reading it. <laughs> the Last of the Crackers. That's a bitch, ain't it? <laughs> But I got the, I got the, you know, you can't make any money honest. Let's face it. You can't, you can't get rich. That's the reason you white folk are so far ahead of us. <laughs> you see? Y'all grandparents been stealing for a million years. <laughs> see, we ain't got nobody like that. And then, and then they buy insurances and y'all propel from one generation to the other. He's on you. But uh, we, I gotta see, we got, we've got to be different. we got to find, find a way to make some money without killing yourself. You can't make it by your hands. That's the reason I never liked uh, What's that man's name? Zeta Sears? No. <laughs> Zeta Sears, everybody, he came across blind twice. <laughs> uh, George Washington Carver. See, he, he advocated working with them damn folk out there Pe planting cotton yeah. and peanuts and stuff like that. You can't make no money like that. That's the reason this thing didn't go. Well, for Tuskegee, he died a long time before he did. Asking about Reverend, any mm -hmm. advice for anybody trying to get in the radio or radio personality? Yeah. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it with you and preachers? Why was that uh, so? It, it should be explained, like in the movie, the, the, the show was gospel, the radio station was gospel until 3 o'clock. <laughs> and then at 3 o'clock, it was sort of like the reverse of, of uh, Jesus. Throwing the, throwing the people out of the church. And you're either, either throwing the merchants out of the church. Pat would throw the preachers out of the radio station. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't even let them in. He's supposed to come on at 7 o'clock, wasn't it? You, you were one of them light preachers. <laughs> on at 7 o'clock. So I would uh, lock the doors where he couldn't get in. <laughs> And uh, I probably let him in after 15, 20 minutes. And then you see, the folks who want to hear all that foolishness, they would be real excited by the end. He, 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 they didn't even know what he was saying. They were so high off of his religion. <laughs> so you also worked, on top of everything else, you worked for a record company called Sue Records, which is one of the great uh, forgotten rhythm and blues labels. And so you had to, like, Drive around the radio stations with uh, 45s in the trunk of the car and. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Wasn't that idyllic? <laughs> <laughs> no, you go to radio stations and get the discharges to play the records. And for them playing the records, you get them some money. You buy the, the regular kids some clothes. And you buy some whiskey. And you buy some drugs. 
bought a little everything. And then you have a hit record. <laughs> then possibly so, yeah. Possibly so. But it was a lot of fun. I got a lot of fun out of it until I got tired and stayed away from home. You know, you can get tired of staying away from home sometimes. I didn't get tired of staying at home. <laughs> Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Pat, which of the entertainers, the old entertainers that you enjoy the most? Now? No, the, the old, back in the day, on the air, who, who came by the station and enjoyed the company the most? Otis Redding, our jazz, I guess you could say, those folks that I had on tonight, uh, Ray Charles and Basie, and country and western. What is this guy's name? I can't. Um, Johnny Paycheck. Johnny Cash? Johnny Paycheck. <laughs> you like you, Johnny Paycheck? Yeah. Oh, okay. You like Johnny Paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean. She's insistent. <laughs> you used to play Johnny Paycheck. I like uh, this man who said, so, I know when to hold him and know when to fold him. And what is his name? Know, Best in the world. <laughs> and also that other cat, too, that, that uh, owes so much money. Johnny Paycheck. No, Willie no. Nelson. Willie Nelson. Yeah, Willie Nelson. Yeah. That's right. He did the one yeah. But he did the one about Now, the those beer. are the greatest. And I also like uh, long hair music. Uh, I like especially Christmas music because it is beautiful. That's the only thing I like about Christmas and Easter is the music. Johnny Paycheck's all right. <laughs> you used to play the one about the ear, bit biting off the guy's ear. I have never heard that out of oh. <laughs> What do you think about President, President Barack Obama? Now you want to get Fraser. <laughs> well, he has a lot to learn. I like him. Like I like a lot of things. Uh, I think he's done well for himself. I think he has overstepped his ground in some instances. Uh, I like this guy that uh, is running for Republican president now. And it does, he doesn't have to be a specific color. I don't give a damn about color. Because I grew up in a little small town down in South Georgia. I didn't know I was colored until I left there. Uh, and I still don't know it, because uh, everybody looks alike to me, for God's sakes. Uh, and I said, you win something, you lose something, some are ain't out. And there are a lot of people, white people, who do you a favor a whole lot quicker than a black man will. And I guess it's vice versa. Yes, ma'am. Yes, what about your time in television? What about what? What about when you were in tele- on television? Oh, uh, I think I liked radio a little better than television. You got a face for radio, huh? huh? You have a face for radio. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, I don't have to dress. Hey, Pat, speaking of television, have a, I didn't see the movie. How about some of those shows with uh, Dick Gregory? <laughs> you got a good bill. <laughs> yep. I talked to Dick Gregory a couple of days ago, and he was telling me that he was in the hospital. No, 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 he didn't tell me. I said, I heard that you were in the hospital. He said, yeah, some of them niggas were in line or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are some great shows with you and Dick. They were up there with Jose, actually. Yeah. Yeah, Dick Grader come out with some of the damn stuff. Some of that stuff he told me, I was halfway scared to, to talk it. <laughs> it was so weird. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pat, of the artists that are out now, who do you like the best? What, what kind of artists? Of, who are, of the musical on the radio? artists that are out now, who do you like the best? You mean on radio here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I very rarely. You know, I have been a little under the weather for about a year now, and I have not been on the radio. And uh, I didn't have cancer or I didn't have AIDS and uh, none of them things. <laughs> so uh, I have not listened to, 
through music too much. But I have learned a whole lot of things laying in that, in that bed listening to the television all day and all night because we didn't have to go to work. Never do nothing but eat one meal a day. I was trying to, I know you're not, you're not you're interested in what was wrong. I this in the head, you know, when you walk, you can't walk at a, at a straight line. <laughs> I was in Jose one night and the police stopped us. And I was, I was, I was driving, but they jumped on Jose. So they said, the Jose says, uh, says one of the police said, uh, get out the car, let me see you walk a straight line. And Jose said to him, he said, man, are you a fool? He said, uh, if you were 65 years old, do you think you could just walk in a straight down line? And the man said, you can go on. <laughs> he said, where is your license? And well, I had my license, but I wasn't. Jose could drink one, drunk, one bottle of beer, and he was drunk and uh, whiskey. He was drunk and a fiddler's bitch. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, so you miss Jose? You wish he was still around? Yes, I do. Yeah. I think the Lord did me an injustice by his dying. Oh. Yeah, I wish so. I bet you if he were around, I'd have some money. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that, that, that historically Jose gets a little shortchanged in the civil rights story? It's, it's, we all know him locally here and know the real story, but it seems like nationally, that when I was researching this film, there's not a lot, of, there's no books, there's not, I don't know any major books on well, it there. Well, let's put it like this. No, I don't think anybody ever made anyone to any great, any, to any great extent out of civil rights, but Andy Young and, and, uh, and ML, they're about the only ones that made any money out of it to any great extent. All the other folk was cheating and swindling. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of that was from college kids who now owe fifty, sixty thousand dollars for their education. And it was uh, they got out of school because they weren't doing too well. I've always thought that. But do you think Jose since he had sort of a he was sort of a thorn in the side oh, of people that that he's that he's not that fondly remembered uh, because he tended to stir things up and get no, people mad. I think a lot of people liked Jose. Yeah, I don't think it's funny. Jose was Jose was a laughable person. He's totally, totally understand. It's just when I, when I this, the original cut of this movie was two hours long, and I just it was I went into so much detail about Jose, and I just had to say, this is for another movie. You know, I have to get back to. You know, you didn't tell me that it was this music, this thing that we did. Because you wanted me to come. <laughs> well, I sort of said we were going out to dinner, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you told me you don't need any money because I got that money. <laughs> well, I, I, as there any other questions, uh, it's, it's you know the, the, the huge snowfall is about to come. We all got to get to the home depot, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you know Kasim Reed? Do you know Kasim Reed? Yeah, about like you do. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know him. I know him when I see him, and I knew him when I hear him. But I, I have talked to him. I guess sixty seconds in my whole life. <laughs> you know, there are certain people that just don't gel. You know, and uh, if a person doesn't gel with me, I don't have nothing to do with it. I let him go his way and I go mine. All right, one last question. Yes, sir. I was wondering, are y'all going to be screening this again anytime soon? Uh, we, we seem to show it about about once a year somewhere. So we'll we'll, we'll do it again sometime. But again, just remember Alipad Movie on YouTube, Alipad Archive, elsewhere on the web, and then the Alipad on Facebook. And we're going to, like I say, we're going to try and put a, a double CD together of some of his great commercials without the you know copyright issues and if you'll go buy that thing he'll he'll get a couple bucks from each cd and he'll be a happier man he'll be a little less grumpy that, that uh, we're, we're enjoying all this stuff and not making any money off it <laughs> well he just you know he's always asking 
when, when's this movie going to start making some money? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't even mind getting paid second, but so far there's been... Well, you see, money. his grandparents left him a chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I had any grandparents. <laughs> How old is this? Uh, 2000, I finished in 2009, and it was in the Atlanta Film Festival in 2010. Wow. It won August favorite there. So... so. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, one last question. Did any damn body pay to come in here? <laughs> um, I had to get a ride. You had to catch a ride. Okay. Did anybody pay? <laughs> Did we make a duck to buy gas home? <laughs> <laughs> you can come with me, I got a ride back. <laughs> <laughs> you better be telling how you ride with them old men. <laughs> she's got some Johnny Paycheck on the CD. Oh, she's got Johnny Paycheck. Let's give Mr. Pat a little round of applause. Thank you, Charles, for coming out. Thank you for a wonderful film producing it. Mr. Pat, thank you for being you. <laughs> yes, and definitely thank you to Porter Sanford Art Center for hosting us here tonight. Let's get a Porter Sanford Art Center a big round of applause.